Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Mind Hunter Season 2, Episode 7, so full spoilers for the episode as always. And this one was very heavily on the Atlanta cases, uh, no BTK scene at the start, in fact the scene at the start was, wasn't even a killer, it was just holding Bill, searching the truck, uh, and yeah. debating over if any of this evidence actually suggested anything. And they thought, that's a suspicious amount of tape. And then Tolan's like, but he's a plumber, so he maybe he just got a lot of tape for plumbing reasons. All, all this confirms to me is it, it just, you know, duct tape fixes every problem. <laughs> well, well, you're not doing something legit or serial killing. Duct tape's yeah. a useful tool, yes. It, 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 you know, it's like, well, duct tape, it'll solve it. No yes. matter what. So, Holden is not convinced, of course. He never was, but... Time's crunching down, they have to try and do something before he can get a lawyer, and they go in to speak to him. And they do a couple of little tests, a couple, they try to figure out if he's, been, if he's racist, and they do a, a little test here. It's a very intentional thing which they play off as just happenstance, which is, they get Jim to get him a coffee, and Jim intentionally drops the sugar packet into it so that he puts his fingers in to, to pull it out, uh, to see what his reaction will be to it, and sure enough he doesn't drink from it, which... Well, there's no conf confirmation for the like, rest of this scene that he's he's in the KKK or anything like that. Uh, it does at least tell them enough to know his feelings on the matter. I'm I'm not being funny. Mm -hmm. If no matter who it was, if someone stuck their fingers in my drink, yeah, I, I probably I, wouldn't I, drink it. I know. I you know what? I know you're going to say that because I feel the same way. I don't care who it is. I'm not drinking something if someone's put their fingers on it. But there's a clear purpose to it in this scene. But the way he looks at it, the way he sort of looks at it and sort of second guesses it, it's Fair about enough. body language. But yeah, so they ask him all these questions uh, about, and ultimately, like, there was always a chance he just happened to be in that location using the porn magazines uh, to jack off. It had nothing to do with the killings. That was always a, a possibility. And sure enough, um, he, he says that his wife is pregnant and they've not been having sex, so he's went out there to, to use the porn magazines. And of course, the thing that confirms for them that he's definitely not him is that they find another body, most importantly, a fresh body that was only killed sometime in the last six hours. And they've had yeah. him locked up in there for like half a day at least. So, yeah, yeah. while he was in custody is the point. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, it gets to this point where Holden realizes uh, that the killer's playing with them. So it's after they go home, or I say home, they go to the hotel to sleep. Uh, Bill, especially, is swamped because he's just flown in late and. Um, yeah. Billy keeping up, you know, keeping his mind straight, and you know he he hears on the news exactly where they found the body, and it occurs to him this is exactly the same location that they were looking for based on the hoax call in the previous episode, and that the killer's intentionally prodding fun at them because the killer clearly saw on TV that they were looking in that area and then put a body there after the fact to say, hey, Begs making my presence question. known. I, I mean, <clears throat> the phone call itself. Did did the killer actually know about that? Send them there, wait for the media, and then you know, uh, okay, they've looked. Now I'll go and dump it. Or did he not know about that location until he saw them searching there? And it's just it is actually someone else trying to claim credit. Well, that's the obvious uh, assumption here, right? I mean, yeah, that, that's what Holden's thinking. <clears throat> we have we have no he, reason. He is, yeah. Based on everything we've heard, we have no reason to think that the person on the, the, the phone call is actually legitimately the, the killer. Oh, no, no, no. I, I never thought it was him making the call, but is he getting someone to make the call just to throw them off and just, just distract mm -hmm. them? You know, send them over to that location, know they'll be busy, and then he can do what he wants that night. Um, it could be, I suppose. I, I get the impression he's more of a lone wolf, though, so I would I would say no. I'd say that he didn't know about that location until he saw it on the, on the news. Because uh, we, we, know, we know the press were there, we saw them arrive, yeah. and like everyone kind of yeah. hightailed out of there at that point. So, there, and I think this show is making a point of making us very aware of where the press have been in the last two episodes, so that when all this started to come about that we're going to use the press as a tactic, it, everything kind of made sense to us. And Oh yeah, they, they were in that location, they, they were yeah. seeing this. Definitely. Um, uh, the, you know, the, the people getting angry because there's a suspect that's been let go, even though, as they have just clearly found out there's no way he is possibly to blame for any of this well i mean this killing and dumping it when he did was presumably a retaliation uh for you know he saw this on the news and was like no i can't let them think it's him you know it's the, it's the claiming credit yeah no thing. that's what holden says he, he says that no he's yeah. making sure that we know he's the only one in the narrative he, he wants to make it clear that no 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 one else should be taking credit for this this is me and me yeah. alone 
And it's at this point where it's basically, I think for us as the audience, we're, we're essentially 100% convinced at this point that this is a pre single predator doing like all these crimes, even though everyone else is still like, oh, maybe there's more than one, maybe it is the KKK, you know, maybe, maybe it is these various things. At this point, though... All mostly reasonable assumptions on their part. To a point, but at this point, though, it's very clear the killer is intentionally prodding them. And if, it's, if someone's prodding them, then there's this one single personality behind this. Probably. Most likely, yeah. Most likely. Like, this does not feel like a group of people making a com committee choice. This, this feels like one person... It does. Yeah. ...who's feeling butthurt. Um, or wants to feel bigger and badder and bolder, and wants to piss off the, the FBI. So, that, that's kind of where we go, go with the episode. And uh, Holden, at this point, like, you know, they want to try and look into this, and... I mean, I think later on the chief says to them, like, hey, the mayor wants to look into the KKK. This is after we have this big uh, meeting in, in the church where the the actual mayor, not the deputy mayor, the actual mayor's there uh, and gets shouted out off the stage by by the community. The, the point of this scene being everyone's, like, shocked, like, wait, he's he's been shouted down in a black church. Like, the, this is the people who voted for him. But now they're angry yeah, at him. Yeah, he's, he's clearly an excellent orator. You know, uh, you know they, they point out, you know, he's, he's a third-generation preacher, essentially. But, yeah, uh, turned to politics. So, he, you know, he's putting that to use. He knows how to speak to a crowd, but it doesn't help him here. We're at the point now where there's been 19 bodies, there's been 19 children killed, that yeah. anything he says that it's not the narrative that the crowd are expecting is him not doing his job. And they shut yeah. him off the stage. And you feel for him because, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's, he's not been, you know, the, the most helpful throughout this case. But here now, he's not doing anything wrong. No, because obviously the other big thing that happens is an explosion, uh, which kills I think three kids. They said on on the, on the news, and you know they're looking into it. There's been no evidence that there was an explosive. There's no evidence that it was even intentional. That it, it looked like it was just a faulty boiler or something like that. They said. And I'm sure it happens. Yeah, it probably does. And they're they're looking into it, but they just see this as all oh, more kids are dead. That's more kids in the city, so it must be the same culprits. They're almost going too far with what Holden does, where Holden's assuming that it's all the same person. They're yeah. saying this explosion must be the same person, even though the explosion seems so different from everything else that Yeah. But obviously they they think it's the you know, the clan, so they're like, Oh hey, you know, that they're, they're getting more extreme. They're getting more brazen, like, okay, they get it, you know, explosive now. Uh Whereas that obviously doesn't fit the pattern at all. They're just reaching at anything, any, anything to kind of kind of make them feel better by having a target. Yeah, I don't know if making them feel better is maybe the right phrase, but yeah, making them feel like they've got something to direct their their aggression and their their grievance yeah. with. Yeah, oh, I think that does make them feel better. Obj you know, I think you know, to them, having something to hate and focus at is better than just not having any answers. Holden, of course, has this plan where he wants to try and lure the killer out uh, with making places in public be important to the crimes by because uh, because the mums are having this march for the children and he wants to put in some essentially vigil locations where they're going to use crosses and they're going to make it like a you know important sites where the killer will be too tempted not to appear and watch and maybe be there in person so they can maybe canvas and get you know license plate numbers they can look for suspicious figures maybe get a list of suspects that they can then maybe start to whittle down and narrow down that kind of thing mm. and the chief's not really super on board with it but he's like you know uh yeah well like sure okay we have a better idea let's do it so bizarrely the biggest problem with this whole plan is how long it seems to take to get some crosses made and delivered. Yeah, because the FBI has a bit of a debate about which department should be sorting out this. It, yeah, this, this is baffling to me. Like, I, I almost thought that when they said crosses that they could just go out and get a couple of two-by-fours and nail them together and, you know... No, no, this is this is bureaucracy at its finest. Yeah, just, just go get a couple of planks of wood and nail it together and just slap it on there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get it. They want it to be a bit more official and uh, more of a presentation, so it looks like there's more thoughts put into it. I get it, but yeah. it just you know, like that—that that, that was my like. Just get a couple of bits of wood. That's all you need. Um, I I feel like that would have been rather insulting to the families, but sure, sure. Uh, but it's not really for them, of course. But it is nice that Holden goes to see uh, Mrs. Bell and uh, speaks to her about. Um, you know, not asking permission so much, but asking for their help and sort of presenting it in the right way so that it looks legit and it looks like it is this big deal to everyone involved. Yeah, and she cl clocks on pretty quickly 
what he's getting at and and she accepts that no no this is still a nice thing to for the family as well it will, it will help them having these mm. memorials you know having that there will be good for most of them not the ones whose who the kids are still missing obviously um but also yes it has an extra purpose but she's not against that because you know she wants to catch the guy yeah she understands it um and of course she's the one who kind of speaks at the church after the mayor shouted off the stage and uh, kind of yeah. tells them what they want to hear. Uh, although she not never actually outright kind of says, "Oh yeah, it's definitely the KKK." She she's very much more vague about who it is and just sort of says, "No, no, we're going to like investigate this. We're going to do this ourselves. We're going to." I think she's very aware of what she's saying here. Yeah. She's not directing it at you know at the KKK like like you know a lot of the crowd want her to, but she's just being on their side because she's been pretty, you know, open with Holden that, yeah, okay, she kind of seems to be in agreement with him that, okay, maybe there is a single predator, you know, and maybe, the, you know, she, you know, he's going to her with these plans, and she seems to be going yeah, along with the I think at the ver- to a point. At the very least, I think when Holden says his ideas to her, I think she knows this isn't just uh, political speak, this isn't just like, you know... She doesn't, she doesn't just dismiss it. Well, you know, because I think anytime anyone else from the from authorities has said anything to them as a group, it's always like, no, this is the PR. And when Holden speaks to her, as much as she may understand or not understand or agree or disagree with what he's saying, and I think it always feels like it's coming from an honest place. It feels like Holden's yeah. being genuine with her, and I think that's why she's always, you know, as much as she's still a very not exactly a happy, cheery person. I mean, why would she be given the what she's no. been through recently? But uh, she's always kind of given him time. She's always kind of listened to hear, you know, heard him out. Yeah, so, which which is why I think very carefully here in this church, she doesn't direct at any specific target, but just just get some on side. Yeah, uh, and we get more examples as of well as uh, of the police not doing their jobs because Jim's interviewing uh, the oldest kid who's went missing, uh, Pac Man. Yeah, because his name's Patrick and he likes Pac Man. Um, he goes to see. Good reason as any. Yeah, he goes to see uh, that kid's mum and talks to her and starts because because he, he has a relationship with at least one of the other victims. I think two actually at this point. Two. Yeah. And he starts asking questions like, "Oh yeah, so he knew these other two victims?" And like, "Yeah, yeah." And she and she says, "Oh yeah, it was really hard for me. I feel like every other month there was like someone else he knew turning up dead." And he's like, "That often? Like, did he know more of the victims?" He's like, "Yeah." And he goes through a list of yeah. like maybe five or six of them. Yeah, yeah, and one of them being like someone who lives across the street, and it's like you know was really close with them, and it's like, hmm, like how did we not know this for a start? Like how, how did we not know there was connections between yeah, like, seven and there's other connections like uh, obviously Holden a few episodes ago asked for the you know all the the files on local uh, offenders, mm-hmm. and we pull one out and oh hey look. It's that other house from where uh, Bill and Jim were. Yeah, the brick house, yeah. Um, and while the culprit here that was picked up uh, is white, they've got photos of lots of young boys, and it's like, well, if those young boys appear in Eddie's photos, that may lead to whoever's taking the photos or buying them or, or whatever. There may be a yeah, trail it, from it, there. it was less a case of, oh, this is the guy, but more, okay, well, he's potentially part of a ring and maybe that will lead us to who who it actually is and, th- and this is where holden because holden was very disinterested in this and i was like no holden th- this could lead to the kids through the photos like if the kids are in those photos then it could lead to the guy i mean even if we all agree that this this guy who's actually who, who's in possession of these right now isn't the dude it could still lead to whoever the dude yeah, is yeah, holden's like no all the kids in these photos are all white and they are but okay well are there other photos that someone else has you know, you know, th- you know, the, the, they all took together, but uh, you know, mm. that someone else took the, the 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 photos of the other kids. So they're doing this plan. Bill's running back and forth. We'll talk more about his side of stuff, uh, his personal stuff, uh, in a minute. But um, you know, it's starting to get to holding a little bit that he keeps like disappearing on Thursdays and coming back because we we go through a couple of weeks in this episode, and. Yeah he you know and bell's like oh give me a break i get personal stuff like you know behold olden's starting to get on his case for it and just like the day of the march but they didn't think they were going to be able to do their plan the the crosses arrive uh on the morning of and when they open the boxes there's assembly required uh and they panic trying to find the right bit for the drill yes 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 so the three of them have to sit there and this isn't like you know present day ikea stuff where it's all the allen key like, this is not you have to drill in the screws like you know it's, it's not that user friendly <laughs> yeah they're expecting you to have some power tools here <laughs> i mean I, I think it's still fair to say most people own a drill i don't know a drill <laughs> do you not no 
I own a drill. Uh, I've never, never known anyone to not own a drill personally. I, I've literally never owned a drill in my life. My family's never owned a drill. <laughs> that's that's weird to me. I've I've never known a household not to have, you know, the toolbox and a drill kind of in a cupboard somewhere. A toolbox, sure. Screwdrivers and a hammer, sure, for the little things. No, that no, up. no. You t- you, screwdrivers, hammer, wrenches, drill. That said, you agree with me that most flat packs you're buying these days do not require the use of a drill. Uh. Not unless you want to fix it to the wall, which a lot of them recommend. Sure. Uh, I've never done that. <laughs> well, no, but I mean... <laughs> it, you know, it's often advised for larger items. Yes. And, you know, for the record, my cats jump on my bookcases and they always wobble a bit, but they've never fallen over from the cats. I've knocked one over, but I mean, that was... I was even... going to say, did you destroy one like six months ago? Well, yeah, but that was in the middle of the floor. It wasn't like I could t- attach it to the wall anyway. Well, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> they have to race. They have to race to get to the the the, the march. And, and uh, the music here is terrifying. The music it goes straight into horror movie music, and not only that, it goes into um, some very specific shots have a, a filter on them. It goes into like sort of old school seventies film. I actually got the impression that those shots were being pulled from the TV cameras. There, yeah, I got that towards the end of it because you could see the TV cameras up ahead, and it made sense. There was a couple that were holding those around the back of an alley, and it went into that shot, and I thought yeah. that, was, that was a bit weird, but. Yeah, and no, I agree. It was interesting, but the, the music was straight out of like a serial killer chase in a horror film. It was. Um, which gave it an interesting vibe compared to it's normal. It's such an unusual choice for, you know, th- this is a a typical right race against the clock, get to somewhere first, tents, sure, typically high octane, you know, like you know, fast music. This is completely against type. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it to play it like he was going to die if he didn't make it. Well, I think the purpose of this, I think the purpose of this is to show that Holden really wasn't thinking about the families. He was just thinking about the case because he's like so in, in like in the world of this music, right? He's in the high octane, tense thriller music and he's trying to get to that point so he can get the cross just in time so that it'll make, do, do the thing that he's hoping to achieve. And he gets there and it's like, you know, when, when Mrs. Bell and the rest are walking up to him, it's like the, the, the tone just drops completely and it's like, oh, this is quite serious. They're all quite upset. <laughs> like, there, yeah. there was more to this day than just me, like, winning this this little yeah. plan that I, I devised. Um, and it seems to be a failure, you know, when him and Bill are talking later, it seems like, yeah, it was, it was a good idea, but, you know, ultimately never succeeded. Um, although it wouldn't shock me if we do end up hearing something next episode where it did kind of achieve yeah, something yeah this is sort of one of those situations where maybe someone came back the next day to the because mm-hmm. obviously i assume they're leaving the memorial crosses up f- for now at least uh, i don't uh, feel like they'd take them down at the end of the day yeah i, I was because even when we were saying the plan i thought you know they might not show up during the crowd scenes themselves but he might kind of appear later when it's quiet yeah um, from a distance or something like that you know you, you always get the impression that you know from the interviews when they're going to relive these scenes it's quite personal to them yeah uh, quite private so maybe maybe they'd want to do it when it's a bit quieter yeah yeah makes some sense uh so you know um we dive back into bill's stuff his personal stuff yeah and he of course does a spot visit uh just just on bill before we go on Mm -hmm. you know the the point where they got the cross finally assembled and it's on the floor oh, and yeah. he just stands over it and it's just obviously all comes flooding into him. Honestly, see, as soon as they mentioned crosses and their, their plan, I started thinking about his son, uh, about Brian and what he went through and I was like, oh, this is an interesting little thematic connection and then they kind of paid off on it with that moment where he's just seeing yeah. the cross on the floor uh, in the same sort okay. of position. Yeah. Uh, so there's a spot visit from the, the social worker and, you know, she's like, oh, you leaving on a trip because it must be Monday morning, presumably. And Yeah, he's all packed. He's like, yeah, 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 I'm working away for a case. Uh, it's going to be a long one, but I'm coming back every weekend, blah, 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 for the appointments. And she's like, oh, do you often go away? How long, you know, how long does it take? Like, oh, it can vary, you know, cases. And Nancy tries to kind of like, oh, he, it's, it's actually kind of weird that he's working on an active case. Normally he, he's doing research now and teaching. Like, that's the sort of thing he does now. And she's trying to like play it as like being more normal. Like it's not as weird or creepy. But like everyone, this is like the third time this season this has happened where she's tried to play it down and then the person and, uh, finds out what he does and starts asking him questions because they're so, interested. So, so what you, what case are you working on at the minute? And you, you mentioned, you know, they are the Atlanta kids. And she goes, oh, I saw it on the, on the news. She goes, 
Uh, and immediately she's interested. Yeah, it's like, how do you help with that? It's like, oh well, you know, our division is new, and we we we, we, we build, build a profile, build a profile. And I think again, much like the therapist, this is kind of interesting to her because it's almost like sort of veer into her her mindset, like the way she works and the, the sort of job she does is like the idea of like putting putting the profiles together. Yeah, um, her job is: are these people, you know, are these parents? Uh, you know, sound to look after yeah. this kid. And even it, the kids themselves, I think. I think there's also a profile yeah. on the kid to see if they are, are they healthy? <laughs> from, yeah, or are they, are they a danger? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then he's also, how do you do that? So, oh, we'll interview, you know, men who have committed violent crimes. Uh, and I don't think he actually drops any names in this one, but it's just... No, uh, it's just like, but he does, he does say serial killers, we're calling them. Yeah. So, again, just to show you, I mean, even if it's not a, a term yet, killers, right? You know, it's, it's okay, it's that level of violence. And once again, Nancy kind of freezes up and looks really upset that he's he's even saying this much, and it it really is it's really painting her as someone who is like terrified to accept that any of this stuff is going on. She really wants to remain as ignorant as possible to it. I think she was okay until it was like, okay, this might be affecting them keeping their son, and she's now she's like, okay, no, nothing. We no, need no, to no, be no, 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 even before that, like all season, every time it's came up in front of the neighbors and the the barbecue in the first episode. Sure, but she's never been as bad as this. And even before um, she starts asking questions about, Did you, do you bring your work home with you? And he's like, oh, never. Like, even before that, she looks really upset in this scene. I think this is painting her as someone who's, you know, like, I don't think, like, oh, sure, she's she's acting more severe about it now because it might affect her her kid. Yeah. But I don't think this is, like, new information or a new part of her character. I think her character has always had this problem and it's now showing even greater because... And it's just like in the therapist's office last couple of episodes where she's refusing to give things, she's getting defensive because she'd rather just sort of wish it all away as opposed to actually yeah. dealing with it. Whereas Bill's whole job is accepting that these bad things happen and analysing it and studying it and understanding why. And the thought of understanding for Nancy is terrifying. She doesn't want to understand. She wants to pretend things are normal. And yeah, yeah. Th th that's where she is in this scene. And then that leads to the other big scene she has in this episode where the mother of the, the murdered toddler comes by and wants to talk to her and she you know, she, she invites her in. it's obviously a very serious conversation stepping on eggshells uh but ultimately she's there yeah, to to forgive him and she's i want you to know i forgive your son and you know nancy at this point goes very quiet she, she's very just you know staring ahead at this point and then she asks can i can i speak to your son can i speak to brian and let him know i forgive him and nancy's just like no and i think this ties back into her just not wanting to accept any of this she doesn't want to make yeah, this, this more was, real for brian this was a, probably a very unhealthy choice yes this, this was very and don't get me wrong i think from a just a, a proactive logical standpoint i feel like okay if i was nancy i may be concerned that what if this woman actually is is this is an act and she's actually wanting some kind of revenge or something what, what if you know, I mean, sure, that could be going through the head. I don't feel that in the moment. No, nor, nor do I. I mean, or even maybe, maybe revenge is a bad word, but maybe she's worried that she might say something or like you know say things to him that are less healthy. You know, like sure, it sounds great in face value. I want to forgive him, but what if she loses her temper or, or gets emotional and says some other things? Like I can, I can get that there's some real reasons why you shouldn't necessarily just jump to this. Sure, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like that. It feels that like Nancy is again shutting in and doesn't want to like move forward with any of this well this is probably quite an abrupt cut from whatever we just said because connor's internet went out and we couldn't finish the review and uh there may have been a final point to making whatever we're talking about uh we're just going to have to, to have an abrupt cut here and talk about the final chunk that we have to talk about which is the wendy subplot of the, of the episode uh so here we are uh but wendy stuff can be boiled down to one general idea and that is that gun benches her and says now nah, you shouldn't be out doing interviews that's not your job you should be here and be safe and yeah. be you know and so it takes so long to even see wendy in this episode mm. like because uh, when she first popped up I, I was so shocked that oh yeah yeah this is a thing that i was like how long has it been it was like almost 18 minutes into the episode when she first popped up uh so I mean, quite a meaty amount in this, just under a third, I think. I think this is an hour long episode. Yeah, it was a full hour. Yeah, the yeah. days of the fifty minute episode are a bit by us now. Yeah. Um, no, I uh, I liked this scene a lot. Not not because I enjoyed what was happening, because it was very frustrating. But I liked the scene because it was so frustrating. Because Wendy continuously keeps saying things that implies she wants to keep doing it. That she's no, I'm getting a feel for it. I want to keep doing this. I want to keep interviewing people. Um, it's practical. It keeps us going. 
and gone every single turn just t- flips it around and says oh soon we'll have all these agents trained and they can do it and you you can you know you'll have all this all this incoming data from all these different interviews you're going to have a big workload and not that, forgetting the fact that that's irrelevant right now because they don't have six or seven agents going around the country at the same time yeah but she keeps trying to insist that she was wanting to do it and he keeps kind of shooting her down now, admittedly, she never outright says, no, I would like to keep doing this. She never quite actually says the exact sentence, but she says everything but. <laughs> like, she's yes. trying to be as polite, but hint it as much as possible. She does, which, which you know, her girlfriend calls her out on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that she's she's too too timid with people, I guess. She, she doesn't uh, stick up for polite, herself. Polite, I think, was the word she used. Was it polite? But... too polite, yeah. Yeah, because um, they have this fight, of course, because she asked her to move in, but she phrases weirdly. it kind of weirdly, because it's like, oh, yeah. oh, I've got a spare bedroom that's not getting used. You could sleep in there. And I think quite rightly, the bartender's like, um, I mean, I may say yes to moving in with you if you actually want me to move in with you, but if you just want a roommate, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> it's a very mixed signal. It's very much like, I want you to be here, but it almost reads to her as, I don't want anyone else to actually think we're a gay couple, so you're, you know, you'll you be in the other room, and it'll just yeah. look over roommates kind of thing. And she calls her out on it and gets kind of upset, even though she's made a breakfast. Because because the scene starts in a fairly happy place. It starts in a, oh, you made me breakfast. Ooh. Um, yeah. She's all happy with her eggs and bacon. Um, future record, anyone who makes me breakfast in the future, I don't like eggs. Just keep that in mind. Um, That's fine. No one's ever going to make you breakfast. So th- this is a big thing for a character, and she and she's presumably building up to maybe going in and actually letting Gun, you know, know what she thinks. Because keep in mind, it was just last episode that he tried to pimp her out for a bigger budget. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing, which I assume they got, given that they're expanding to quite a few new agents by the sounds of it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Pro- maybe. Probably thanks to uh, Bill at the retreat more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly, Wendy didn't do anything for that. Uh, she she no. right, rightly got out of there as quickly as possible. Yeah. But I think what's interesting about this is that Gunn, for the most part, has had a, quite a positive effect or a, a, a positive impression on the, us, the viewers, right? Because he comes in, he's behind our main group. He's like, yes, this is important. We should keep doing this. We should treat it more seriously. But what we're seeing casually over these last couple of episodes is just this sexism uh you could call it of the era, I suppose, but just just the way he talks to Wendy is different. The way he treats her is different. Yeah. The way he invited her up to that meeting that one time, just so she felt included, but not to actually give her anything to do or have an opinion or have a say in what was going on. And that was a weird one because it was like, well, at least he's including her. That's that's weird, like a weird amount of acknowledgement, right? Well, it's, it's kind of, yes, you're part of the team. Come to the meeting. Yeah, but it's kind of weird though because it's like I want to appear like I'm making you part of the team, but it I don't is, actually yeah. want to give you the the credit or the the responsibility to be a part of the decision making yeah i don't think he was consciously thinking that though like oh, oh sure. this is for appearances sake i think he was like no no, no she's part of the team let's bring her up and, and then just realized have it, anything to say for her yeah they had nothing to say to her yeah so yeah. like yeah we're, we're seeing this throughout gun and it's it's uh certainly an interesting facet to because I, I think between between how wendy's being treated um just as a woman, now this is before anyone even knows she's gay, and then of course how Jim's being treated, we're definitely also delving into the sexism and racism, and, and indeed the homophobia uh, that was more rampant in the FBI, or just in general at the time period, so yeah. it's, it's interesting to sort of have these things kind of seeding into the show, and, and how they're kind of like, these attitudes are actually being obstacles to just getting the job done and just actually following through in what they're doing. Like, instead of letting Wendy train herself and get better at this, it's like, no, 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 we'll train new people from scratch, because your place yeah. is in the office, is essentially what he said. So, we're, we're seeing how this stuff affects things, and that's kind of uh, a big part of uh, Wendy's plot in this episode, so, um, yeah. no. Um, it's a it's a pretty small plot, it's only a Two or three scenes, I think. Yeah, it's a couple. It's the scene with Bill, uh, not with Bill, sorry, but the scene with uh, Gun, and then the scene with. Uh, oh, I think she has one scene with Bill actually, where she gives him some work to do, and is nice to him and says, "You know what? You can do half of that next Friday when you're here for half a day." <laughs> yeah. Um, because they're, they're they're getting ready to like sort of say what what is the curriculum of training people, and what I don't really envy this job actually because I feel like they're so fresh at it anyway. I mean, sure, they're more experienced than everyone else is right now, but not, would you think they're at a point right now to actually build a curriculum for other people to train to do what they're Absolutely doing? Absolutely not. It was only last episode that Wendy realised her whole system of questions doesn't work. Exactly. They're still figuring it out. Like This is still in its infancy. 
Like, it is, but I get why they need to expand. Otherwise, if they don't yeah. like, if they go, oh no, we don't want to expand. It it, it makes them look bad. Like that they're, they're not good at what they're doing, and you know, so they have to keep up the appearance. And you right? can also look at it from the perspective that they need to have more people doing it just so they can learn and like develop it from you know from this point on anyway. Like the idea that having a few more agents doing more interviews, having different types of people interviewing different types of uh you know mass murderers or whoever, like those like different perspectives will actually help build what the the curriculum and what the, the the tactics are like okay you know the idea that certain killers will react differently you know just the idea of wendy walking in a room versus bill and holden versus jim even you know if that killer has a bias in some way how does that affect the conversation is that something you want to, to provoke a reaction is it something you want to avoid because it will hinder it's, the conversation so on and so on the most interesting is they have a a control group in you know the killer themselves and they can send in different agents for different sure. interviews with the same person and see what the reactions are and, and see what they answer differently yeah sending someone into kemper should be like a rite of passage like everyone has to go see kemper because <laughs> kemper will happily talk to all of them he, he's he's quite happy to have a chat <laughs> he is here uh dear you always put on a payroll like we're going to keep sending people into you so we'll send you some nice goodies for prison all right it's payment just you you keep talking to our agents yeah uh, about whatever you want to talk to them about <laughs> uh no solid episode i feel weird because I, I i don't even remember what we said about the first half of the episode now, but i'm sure I'm, it was i'm sure it was a thoroughly riveting conversation yeah yeah and i call some bickering you know hopefully you had some fun with the conversation so apologies we skipped today but tech faults are tech faults <laughs> and it happens it, it so, was real frustrating yeah especially since we were almost done recording we had this one last plot to talk about and we were we were done that yeah. was it if it had happened after that then fine i could have put the because it was it was Carl's, if it was my internet then it wasn't going up but it was Carl's internet so i could have put it up still but hey -ho. it was it was and it was just it was down for probably a good hour yeah long enough that we'd made the call to you know i think you were going to bed and i was doing some other uh, i was yeah. streaming i, I just i did my late stream a bit early <laughs> yeah because what else was going to do? Uh, but yeah, so let us know what you thought of episode 7 of Mindhunter. Uh, we'll see you next time for episode 8. Uh, get us on the, 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 the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. Like and subscribe, all the usual things. Rate the podcast on your podcast app. Uh, five stars and a review helps more people find us. And maybe they'll find other TV shows on this feed that they want to see, see talked about. Also check out the other podcast feed we have, which is just Almost Cancelled TV Reviews, which has all the non not all the non-Netflix shows that we do, to say that properly. Uh, but if you want to support us even more than that, you can go to patreon.com uh, slash TV and you can support us financially for as little as $1 per month and you get some bonuses, some exclusives, some extras. If you go to the higher tiers, you get your name at the end and things like that and you can uh, feel warm and fuzzy in the inside for uh, keeping all the content coming. But that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>